All right, good afternoon. Uh, the time is now 3.33, and I'm calling to order the Physical Services Committee meeting of Monday, May 22nd, 2023. Um, a copy of the agenda for this meeting may be found on the county website under the tab for the legislature. I'd ask everyone to please silence their phones and electronic devices, and at this time, please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ben. Here. Russia. Here. The Duke. Here. Thank you. Okay. First item on the agenda, Department of Public Works requests the approval of a right of way dedication along the westerly line of County Road 32 Mill Street through the lands of tax map parcel 12-1-16.2 in the town of Cornwall. The current file deed for this property, L.14168, P.891, still recites, quote, along the center line of Mill Street, unquote, and a 20 foot wide dedication along the property is being proposed for county highway maintenance and use. Legislative request number 145. Could I get a motion? Is that Who's that? Works expression? Yes. And the new to all right, thank you. Go ahead, Deputy Commissioner. Thank you. So this is for an offer except an offer of dedication from uh, parcel 12 dash 1 dash 16.2 in County Cornwall. Um, to, uh, for highway maintenance uses, the area of the um, property to be dedicated is 0 0.067 acres. And this parcel is across from Herald Avenue. Um, down here at 32, uh, I think the first road in off of Lincoln and off of Quaker. Any questions or comments? Um, yes. So, we're, this is the right away for a utility company to? This is, this parcel, their deed, um, recites to the center line of our road currently. Mm -hmm. And um, they were before us for an application for a driveway entrance and their site plan for their lot. And they've put in an offer of dedication for this property that um, basically is 20 feet from the center line of our road. So it gets, it puts their property line now right behind where our guide rail is. And that way we own and see the area that we maintain of our roadway. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, I've asked uh, Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner to provide us with an update on roads and bridges. And then I amended that this morning to also request uh, an update on the DPW ARPA projects, both status and schedule. So let's do the roads and bridges first. Certainly. Um, in regards to roads, uh, we've been continuing with our pavement management program where we uh, analyze and um, calculate the condition of our roadways every year. Um, and we use this as a guide um, for our pavement preservation and rehabilitation program. So currently, the average county road uh, pavement condition index is an 89 out of 100, which is good. Um, and it's I think keeping it in that upper 80s range is very important to um, for the rideability of the roads and for the uh, safety of the traveling public and also for our cost of maintenance. Um, you know, doing maintenance while the road um, before it deteriorates to the point where we see some of our other uh, roads in this area um, really makes it a lot cheaper to do the pavement preservation. Uh, last year, <clears throat> we resurfaced about 28 miles of county roads uh, through a combination of micro uh, surface treatment, PPST, uh, which is also called Nova Chip, 
and uh, your, your typical hot mix overlay. And for this year, we're anticipating uh, resurfacing about 25 miles. So, um, and I think in general, our roads are in pretty good shape. And that's um, thanks to the continuing funding of our, um, our operating fund and our annual pavement uh, capital to allow us to do that rehabilitation work. So thank you very much. Um, that's kind of what I have for roads. I have okay. a lot more for bridges. Yeah. Just a road question. You said 18 miles last year? 20, 28. 28, and then this year 25? Cool. How many miles of county roads do we have in total? I can't remember the number off the top of my head. 302. 302. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, legislator Ben. Just a comment. County roads are better than state roads. I'll second that. Thank you. We move on to bridges. All right, bridges. Uh, I gave a little handout. I figured I would just go over a couple of bridges we did in house last year. The first one is uh, Bank Street replacement and the village of Warwick. Um, the upper picture is the finished product after we got done replacing the bridge, and the lower picture is what it looked like before. We went in there and demolished the old bridge and, and rebuilt it. And on the back of the sheet, there's a couple of before and after pictures. Um, we worked hand in hand with the village on this. It was uh, these bridges right in the, the center of the village. So uh, we felt it was important to keep it in character with the surrounding architecture. Um, we were pretty proud of how it came out. Nice shot. Very good. It goes over the railroad tracks, right? No. no, no Where are we on the creek? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we used we utilized the existing abutments and uh, footings, which were actually intertwined with the footings and foundation walls of the buildings on the one side. So that worked out well. We didn't have to get in order to work. It was a pretty quick project, and it was all precast um, brick structures, and the, the uh, railing was precast concrete as well. No pictures nice. of the crane setting any of the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept it as the floor now. Especially, especially when they took it like pretty much over one of the buildings. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to have one of the buildings. Uh, the, the business owners had to vacate the building for a short duration while we had to. This is the only option was to bring the structure over top the, wow. the, the front of the building. We got it in. So. You have video? You have to get these beauty shots. I don't, I, don't, I don't have video, but I do have photos. Cool. Wow. Excellent job. It looks it. Um, second sheet is Lake Horton Bridge in the town of Mount Hope on New Vernon Road. And I thought this would be of interest as well because this was um, a bridge that we did with our Catherine Z bridge panels that we received that we repurposed. Uh, first one, we kept the, the concrete surface for the bridges, but this one we ended up uh, putting in a waterproof membrane on and paving over it when we're all done uh, for two reasons. One, because there's a, a dam right next to here, and when the water goes over the spillway, you get a lot of mist. So we wanted the, the whole bridge structure to be black to help with. Uh, the icing and the other one is this project the, the limits were pretty tight so to get the geometry of the road to match up with the flat surface of the bridge deck it was easier to do it with asphalt than it was to otherwise we would have to go go a lot further back with um, the transitions on the road there are no uh, a lot of the other road can do it here. for um bank street or, no, 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 oh, Matt, yeah, yeah, for the Corwin, Corwin yeah, bridge. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Dan, yeah. yeah. Um, nice. Other significant projects we completed last year, we had what we called the various bridge improvements. It was three bridges, uh, Camp LaGuardia Bridge in, on Great Court Road in Chester, uh, the Chichunk Bridge on Chichunk Road in the town of Goshen, and the Salisbury Mills Bridge on Canary 27 in Blooming Grove. Um, all three of those bridges, we did uh, bearings and joint replacements. The, the bridges were jacked up. We did uh, repairs underneath uh, steel and concrete repairs uh, to significantly lengthen the, the lifespan of those bridges. Um, and we also did a bridge deck rehabilitation on the road bridge. But the, the two sheets you have in front of you for the bridges, those were all done in-house with our own forces. This year, 
we're planning on uh, starting actually next week um, powder mill bridge, which is uh, basically a deck repair. Uh, we'll strip the asphalt off, clean up any of the drainage um, that's deficient on it, and uh, repair the, the concrete on the deck, and then put a waterproof membrane down and repave it to extend the life of that bridge. So that's uh, that one's right next to Algonquin Park on Powder Mill Road, and we anticipate starting work on that uh, next Monday, uh, next Tuesday. So, and then um, we expect to go to Lake Horton Bridge. Um, sorry, we expect to go to uh, Board Bridge, which is um, Round Hall Road over the Satterley Creek in the town of Blooming Grove. And that'll be a, a full bridge replacement that we'll be doing in-house with our own crews. Um, and then we uh, had a bid opening for Otisville Viaduct. Uh, and right now the state is reviewing um, basically the, uh, our consultants bid analysis they prepared. And we're just waiting for the state to get the green light for us to go into contract uh, with the lowest bidder, which was Servodome. And that will be uh, demolition of that entire structure. And we'll be constructing essentially retaining walls through there and turning it into a single span structure. It's probably going to the, the uh, work on that will definitely extend into 2024. Um, <clears throat> but we're very excited to get that project going. That was a bridge in New York project. It was nine, um, the original grant application was for 95% of the, the uh, estimated project cost at that time. That project got delayed quite a long ways with right away acquisition. Uh, when we bid it out, it came in a little bit over what the grant amount was, but we made up the difference with CHIPS funding that I think were before the legislature last month. Yes, for that. Um, the legislative bid? That's the one with so many segments yeah. in Otisville? Yeah, yep. On the top of the road that goes to the hardware store? Correct. Okay. And um, part of that project, we're, we're building a small detour road that uh, allows you to bypass the bridge and go back up. It's the geometry of it won't allow for full length tractor trailers through there. Um, they'll have to do the longer detour that it's, I think it's like a 10 mile detour that goes around there. But uh, the, the village had property and we were able to work with them to, uh, to get this detour route. Uh, so basically it would go that's okay. okay. I can imagine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, the other project that we were uh, that we bid out this year, it also got delayed. Uh, this one's a locally funded project, at Main Street Number Two, uh, in Cornwall. So the bridge is right back for the traffic circle. Um, we so we got a, a late start on that because of right away acquisition. Uh, it just took forever to get one of the the easements that we needed for uh, reconstruction of one of the wing walls. But we, we bid it out and it came in, the bids were extremely high. It was only a month after Otisville when we bid it out, but uh, we had way less bidders. Um, the three bidders who did bid on it were the ones who traditionally have been on the upper end of the bids that we've received on other bridges. Uh, so that combined with the fact that there's restrictions on when we can work in the stream because uh, there's uh, environmental restrictions because it's a trout stream. Is led us to uh, decide that we, we were going to not award the bid and we're going to rebid in the fall, um, especially after we canvassed uh, a lot of the other firms who did not bid. Uh, quite a few of them said that they had concerns about getting the, the work done that needed to be done before the time restrictions because there was a half the bridge had to be reconstructed in order for um, the gas to get reconnected to allow for the uh, loading that's needed for the winter months. So we had timetables in there. They were, had concerns about meeting it because we were kind of had a late start. And then some of the other uh, contractors just said they had, there was so much work right now that they just weren't able to bid on it. Um, so we are planning on rebidding it in the fall, which will hopefully we'll get better pricing and it'll also allow us for first thing in 2024 start for this will have the full duration of when they're allowed to work in the water for that project. Um, one other project we have going to bid later this year that actually we intentionally are going to uh, plan on doing the same way is uh, Gramline Bridge. And that's 
on New Vernon Road, the same road that Lake Orton Bridge is on. Um, that's over the, I think it's Metro North Railroad. We've had that designed and ready to go for a while, but we haven't been able to do it because it's on a detour route for Otisville Viaduct, so we can't have both of them closed at the same time. So the the plan for the, that one would be to bid it late in 23, um, hopefully award it, and then give that contractor a long lead time to procure all the steel they need for it if there's still delays on that, um, and just have it, that ready to go once the Otisville Viaduct project is done. Legislator to it. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering, you just mentioned about, you know, hopefully getting a better price on it. Have you been seeing that in general that some prices are starting to come down? It's, I always figured it was like a high water mark once they hit a number and they were coming down. Off of it, but, uh, so traditionally, I, I don't like to rebid projects because I have not had very good luck with it um, in the past on the handful of times that I've done it, most of the people, most of the engineers I've worked with have had similar experiences. This project, the, the Main Street number two, I think is unique in the fact that it really didn't get very many bids. The uh, low bid was over a million dollars higher than the engineer's estimate. Whereas on Orsville Viaduct, it was very, very close to the engineer's estimate, the low bid. Um, and like I said, the, the three, um, contractors who did bid on it have from what we've seen on our bids and also our consultant who's working with us what they've seen with bids for other entities um they've been on the higher scale usually they're the three highest bidders yeah. on it so uh, i think there's sort of a good chance but we'll get better pricing when we rebid it thanks thank you so with the cornwall uh, bridge uh, we we anticipated we're going to be more because we weren't going to shut it down and then shut down Main Street, right? Yes. So we did anticipate that. But, um, how how was that looking? In other words, if we were to shut it down and just do the job in one clip, yep. How what would the big potential be? I'm not putting you on the spot here. Please get back to me on it. But I'm just curious as to what a rock is. Like. That one would be really difficult to shut down, just because you'd have that section of Main Street that. Um, I forget what the next road is that's up up there, but you'd essentially be making it so that vehicles couldn't go down that whole section of the road because there's no place to turn around. Safety issue there too. Yeah. That's right. I forgot. Thank and you for the reminder. Even I mean, dump truck or uh, garbage trucks wouldn't be able to go down there to collect fire trucks. Fire trucks. It would, so it, it usually we we prefer to close the bridge and do it as quick as we can, and that's the most economical way to do it. This one, they're really, you know. There was impacts to Main Street businesses, but there's also there really just wasn't a, a good way to do it without uh, keeping it open. Thanks for reminding me, Emma. Legislator yeah. <clears throat> Tuttle. Thank you. Do we have a listing of all of our bridges with their rating? Uh, yes. Yep. We do. Is it posted on our county website? No, I don't believe so. No, but I can. If you want the information, I can get it to you. Yeah, if you could give it to Carrie Ann, okay. she can distribute it to the entire committee. On that, I'll just say that the ratings on it sometimes are not ref like if you see two bridges that are like a 4.5 on there, that won't necessarily mean that they're both in the same condition as far as being ready to for a, a full replacement. Mm -hmm. You know, one could be have a 4.5, and it's because uh, you know the, the the surface on it, the the wear surface is in terrible shape, and you could just do a membrane and repaving. And it would change it significantly. Not, and I'm using that as probably a bad example, but sometimes there's elements of the bridge that you can correct very easily and cost effectively. And there's other ones where the they'll have a similar rating, but the those elements that need to be replaced basically put it in a category where you need to replace the whole bridge. Have you run into any issues uh, over the last couple of years with contractors who are working on our bridges having trouble getting materials and and items to complete the repairs uh long lead times we've had issues with that yes um long lead times like old, old. years or more monthly type of a it was a longer duration like a, a couple extra months i know coming out of covid steel was was really difficult yeah i knew that um 
even the precast stuff though it seems like it's taking longer and it's getting more expensive and i'm not sure if it's because of the trucking going up the rates on that going up um you know there's some steel in the in the precast but so uh, we haven't seen anything where they can't get what they need um and we haven't had any knock on wood any issues where our projects have been delayed because of getting materials to the point where it pushes them out to you know another season or something like that thank you appreciate that a legislator bet just a comment that uh, little stream is a surprisingly good little trout stream for you know small little i think wild brookies mm -hmm. so i've done some catch and release on that stream for the golf course. the one in cornwall yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know what the crew is going to be doing on the lunch hour. <laughs> well, that, that one will be done with a contractor. It won't be, be us. So. Uh, the day I was there, I met Mr. Hines' brother there. <laughs> okay. Is that in on the bridges? That's about all I have for bridges. All right. I, and I also asked you to comment on the ARPA projects. Certainly. Where that stands. So for ARPA, uh, first project I had was uh, from Line Creek Pump Station. And We've procured a consultant for it, and we're just working through getting a contract in place. We're hoping to have a kickoff meeting on that uh, in the next couple of weeks. The schedule that they provided, though, should, uh, within 12 months, we should have the design completed, which would allow us to bid it out around this time next year, which would completely keep us within our ARPA uh, timelines. So um, that's on, uh, on schedule right now. The uh, equipment that would be the highway, the majority of it was highway equipment. There's uh, buildings and ground equipment and then some airport equipment. Um, the majority of the requisitions have been submitted. We're working with uh, general services and budget to get the POs is issued and the equipment ordered. Um, so time-wise, I'm sure that we'll be good with those because my understanding of the ARPA is that we have to have a contract in place by 2024 and spent money by 2026. So, I mean, the longest lead times that I've heard of is you know, two years um, for delivery of, of certain goods. Um, most of the stuff has been in like the nine month range when we've been getting estimates uh, for our equipment. A couple things are a couple months out. So, um, and then I, I also have the uh, Newburgh the design for the Newburgh garage replacement and the Mount Hope garage, uh, maintenance garage addition. We had two weeks ago, we had a pre-proposal walkthrough with our a &E consultants, uh, had a good turnout and we should have proposals uh, another week or so on that. So uh, that should be moving forward as well. Again, that one, I don't have uh, any concerns on delivering within the ARPA timeframe. Um, Truthfully, we plan on having that designed and ready to go, um, you know, to be bid out um, for next year. And if for some reason there's other ARPA money that's available, it would be great to use it for construction. So we'll see. Um, and then the last thing that I'm aware of for DPW is the morgue, uh, which work has started up at the site. Uh, they're doing the, the drilling for the geothermal wells and other site work up there. And uh, the commissioner told me that uh, we're on schedule and there should be no issues with meeting harbor deadlines. Any questions on any of those papers? All right. Thank you very much. Um, next item on our agenda, which is a resolution to support the town of Dubert's opposition to citing the Ulster County Research Recovery Agency landfill. I'm removing that from our agenda today. Um, this is something that's in the very early, I did a little research and it's something that's in the very early stages. If you go to the um, Ulster County Resource Recovery Authority website, um, they um, are, uh, it, it was a very early, our the motion was based on a very early um, investigation, kind of a paper study. It was aerial photography based. 
um, and just some of the takeaways um, from what they what they've said is we've not commissioned a new study, we have not decided that a local landfill is feasible, and we have not determined a suitable location for a landfill. So the next step, and they've interviewed two consulting firms um, to do a feasibility study to determine whether the the sites that came about as a result of the uh, original study um, were warranted. So um, as far as my feeling is and with this committee, um, I, I'm gonna you know, hold off on that. And if we wanna bring it back, we can. If it goes to another committee, so be it. But that's pretty much what I wanted to just let you know go to my research. All right. Um, with that, I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So okay. next later, two. We look say later. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah.